Hi again. Last week we looked at Dwayne McNanny's wonderful work and help for Jehovah's Witnesses and those wanting to reach Jehovah's Witnesses, the Heavenly Weatherman. And in the book, I wanted to give you some highlights. This book apparently is not readily available. So, there are insights in it and I think suggestions for conver conversation with witnesses that are extremely helpful. One of the best resources we had back in the 80s and 90s was the work of Dwayne because he tried to make it hands-on, specific to situations you might find yourself in with dialogue. His, many of his books are composed that way, are put together that way to give you all the tools you need to ask the right questions and, and give the right uh, information, not just from their present points of view that the witnesses hold, but from their past points of view. Oftentimes that's the that's the the best way to penetrate the consciousness of a witness is to contrast their present teachings with their past convictions. And here's a good example of that that would, I think, challenge the average witness to maximal, uh, maximal uh, effect, which would be to give him information that would probably be shocking to him. And in this particular section of the book, Dwayne is concentrating on the contrast between the God of classical Christianity and his attributes and the God of occultists. And of course the witnesses would be horrified to think that they had a lot in common with occult teachings. Well, in this video we'll try to use Dwayne's resource, the Heavenly Weatherman, to show just that. The comparison, for instance, with the teachings of an occultist that most witnesses, at least in my generation, had heard of because we used him as a cross-reference for our translation, specifically of John chapter 1, verse 1. Anyway, let's dive right in. This is on page 7 of the Heavenly Weatherman. He's talking about the, the, the clear teachings of the Watchtower about God. Here, for instance, from Awake of 1963, March the 8th, 1963, Awake. God is not omnipresent. Why? He is restricted to a body and a location. This is an, a quote from that Awake. Some would have God omnipresent or as a principle without a body or an organism, but not so. Jehovah God as a person has a body and a location, even as indicated by Jesus' words. I came out from the Father and am going away, or going my way to the Father. Duane also says this as a summary of how God is therefore placed under restriction by his not just not being omnipresent, but therefore having a lack of information that he needs to manage the universe properly. Duane says, because he is restricted to a place, he needs a communication system which can get information to him. This system of a type of divine glasses and a divine hearing aid are his angels. The society's first president began this teaching when he said, and here's a direct quote from Watchtower, February 15, 1915, Russell's last year of life, before 1916, October 31st, when he died, Russell had said this about God and his non-omniscience. He said, what would be the use of the fathers receiving the angels into his presence unless there was something to be communicated? Our understanding is that God's knowledge of our affairs and interests is gained by methods with which we are not acquainted, we may assume, however, that the mediums used are largely the angelic messengers. And then to page 14, and the subhead on this page is the occult view. God doesn't know all things. Duane says the Bible can be trusted to reveal the truth about the knowledge of God because all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16. Duane says the Holy Spirit himself reveals truth to men. Unfortunately for Jehovah's Witnesses, their beliefs are based on the traditions of men, the Watchtower leaders. Jehovah's Witnesses rely on extra-biblical writings, Watchtower publications, for their spiritual nourishment. We have seen the Society's publications do not teach what the Holy Spirit says about God. Now we will see that Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs are right in line with the teachings of the unholy spirits, demons. 
The Society is quite familiar with books published by the Johannes Graeber Memorial Foundation, and I've requested them for their libraries at headquarters in New York. These books, written under demonic guidance, of course that's not what Graeber said, he called them spirits, written under demonic guidance, contain the same doctrines on God's lack of knowledge as taught by the Watchtower leaders. The book Communication with the Spirit World of God is written against the teachings of orthodoxy. In it, these points are made directly by the demon guide of Johannes Graeber. 1. God has a spirit body, so he is not omnipresent. And here's a direct quote from pages 260 and 261 of Graeber's book Communication with the Spirit World of God. God, as an integral thinking and planning being, is a personality and there can be no such thing as a personality, an ego, without form or shape. God, as the highest spirit, differs from all created spirits, and difference is possible only where distinguishing features exist. Again, features can exist only where there is shape and form. Inasmuch as God possesses shape and personality, he is not omnipresent in the sense in which you understand the word. He's addressing himself, by the way, in, in this book to people who don't accept these specific teachings and perhaps are subject to the traditional teachings of the church. He, it is true that he is aware of all things and of all events through the force that emanates from him. For everything in existence owes its being, its perpetuation, and its functions solely to the force disseminated by God. In him we live, move, and are. Here he's quoting from Acts 17, Paul in Athens. Through his power, he maintains contact with everything that exists. Nothing can escape his notice. But as a pers personified spirit, he is not everywhere. You unconsciously admit as much in the opening words of the prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven. Here's Dwayne's point number two. God does not have foreknowledge of the outcome of human spiritual endeavors in order not to violate the free will of men. The demon guide says, Quote, you teach, namely, that God also knows how men will act of their own free will at some future time. But in this respect, you are misinformed. God knows everything that he has taken and, rather, God knows everything that has taken and is taking place. He knows the past and the present. He knows men's thoughts, and as for the future, he knows those destinies which he himself has planned for his creatures. But... He has no foreknowledge of those future events which men may shape by the exercise of their free will. He does not know beforehand what a creature of his will do of its own will in all circumstances. Obviously, God, who knows the hearts of his creatures full well, can foretell very closely what course they will decide upon. And we spirits also have this faculty to a great degree. Even you mortals, if you know the character of a fellow creature, are able to predict with reasonable certainty, how he will behave and decide in any given circumstances. But all of this is mere conjecture and is not the point at issue. You notice here, he's the, the speaker is the spirit giving this information to Johannes Graeber. But all of this is mere conjecture and is not the point at issue. I was speaking of an infallibly certain foreknowledge of a course of action which is determined by the exercise of free will. And such unerring foreknowledge is possessed by no spirit, not even God himself. Hence God could not foresee that some of a great many of the spirits he had created would forsake him, and naturally could not know in advance which of them would do so. He knew only that there was a possibility of such defection by reason of the fact that the spirits were free to act as they might choose. Had God had the positive foreknowledge, as your doctrines teach, that is, your, your orthodox doctrines teach, that beings which he had created would abuse their liberty of action by deserting him, he would not have called them into existence at all, but would have created only such of those whose loyalty no question could ever arise. That's all from Communication with the Spirit World of God, pages 262. 264 and 265. And then Duane's summary third point. How does God learn what men are doing? His angelic spirits report information to him. 
And here's a direct quote from the book again, page 262. You probably cannot picture to yourselves that spirits of God stand watch over each living being and that they report on whatever happens. Hence, nothing can take place without being known to God. And for this reason, you speak of God as being omniscient. In this, you are right, although in one respect, you exaggerate his omniscience, perhaps through fear of detracting from his greatness. End of quote. And then point number four, Duane's summary, all of, all of the above is the truth according to a demon. Jehovah's Witnesses believe this demon doctrine, as well as others, that the Watchtower Society teaches. Graber's Spirit Guide also says, and here's a direct quote from page 263, you know that I am telling you the truth in this, as I have done in all else. You have had plenty of proof of the fact that I am a truthful spirit. For this you have my oath taken in the name of the Almighty, the true God. When I tell you that God has no foreknowledge of the voluntary actions of men, I am not detracting from his greatness. It is you who would dishonor God by teaching the contrary, and thereby picturing him to men in an odious light. For there are many people who deny the existence of God because they cannot conceive of a deity capable of creating beings, knowing them with absolute certainty, to be predestined to everlasting misery. Among other things which you teach incorrectly, as it happens, is the doctrine of eternal damnation. According to this doctrine, then, God has created millions of human beings with the full and unalterable assurance that they are to be everlastingly damned. Such a God would not be a God, but a monster. End of quote. And Duane ends this section this way. Do Jehovah's Witnesses realize their doctrinal arguments are endorsed by the demons? And again, this is not, of course, what the, what uh, Johannes Graeber himself would recognize. He would call them the benevolent spirits, truthful spirits, as one of these demons calls himself, a truthful spirit. But Jehovah's Witnesses would recognize that Spirit guides in occultism are demons, so we're not being controversial here. I don't think Duane is either. He then summarizes about the content of the rest of the book, which we'll get to, hopefully, in, in pieces anyway later. The rest of this book will be devoted to a debate on the subject of God's knowledge. This debate will follow a point-and-counterpoint format. The point will be made by the Watchtower Society and will be countered by both the scriptures and logic. So I'm looking forward to getting into this more deeply. So, summary, again, God is not omnipresent, and therefore, logically, he's not omniscient either. He needs help. So, God is dependent on his angels for information, for facts. God learns. I'll put in a link to uh, the first of five short videos we did on Johannes Graeber's parallels to the teachings of the Watchtower. We did five videos totaling less than half an hour, I think. So the first of them is on your screen. And the, the track that we derive these videos from is called Truth from Two Tables, question mark. Based on, of course, what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You can find that track, by the way, in its original form on our website, onewonders.org, in the PDF archive. See you soon.